Hi, I'm Abby. I have a lot of records, and this is Vinyl Monday. So welcome back, or welcome if this is your first episode here. Uh, this is my series where I just sit down, I pick a record from my collection, and I talk about the music that I love. So funny story, you guys. I had a really great episode planned for today, which is Independence Day in my country. It was going to be CCR, Willie and the Poor Boys, and I had like a great script planned out. I poured so much into this, but <laughs> you guys, I fucked up. So on this series, I have never bought a record for the express purpose of having it on my show. And that's what I did for Willie and the Poor Boys because it wasn't already in my collection. It's like the one CCR record I don't have. And I really wanted to talk about it for obvious reasons. I bought it like way in advance. I had everything worked out and then the seller just fucks me over and doesn't ship it for like a week. Uh, we were supposed to be talking about this one next week, but instead I flipped the two episodes around, so next week is Willie and the Poor Boys. This week is Are You Experienced by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. So my copy of this album is a repress from 1968, and as you can see, we're getting a little bit of glare here. This is getting a little shiny. It might sound a little crinkly as well. And that is because this is still in the shrink. I have this in a special sleeve that um, sticks and opens up from the side instead of um, coming out of the top like this. And that is because I really don't want to destroy this shrink more than it already has been. I am gonna be showing you this record. This shrink does open right here but I wanted to keep it as intact as possible. So this is not going to leave uh, shiny plastic land. <laughs> I bought this from Newberry Comics back when they still sold used records. RIP Newberry Comics used records section, you are terribly missed. And this is a stereo copy as well. I'm not normally super picky about like, oh, get this one in mono, it sounds way better. Or get this mix in stereo, it sounds way better. But for this album, it does make a difference. If you can hunt down a mono press, uh, you should pick it up. I have a US copy here, and there were actually multiple album covers for this release. The UK cover was designed by Chris Stamp, but Hendrix didn't like it. This wouldn't be the first time Hendrix didn't like the album art he was saddled with. I think of Axis Bold as Love as being a pretty good example of this kind of scenario. So he was able to have a little more input, it seems, for the US art. B-Roll Abby is gonna do her absolute best to show you the album art with this lighting situation. Just bear with me, guys, it's gonna be a little shiny. So my cover art was shot by Carl Ferris. He photographed it on a fisheye lens, which gives it that you know, super cool photographic effect that we all associate with sort of the psych rock scene in the 60s, especially the Brits. And we also have kind of an infrared film effect going on here where this green foliage is swapped out for a more pink tone. I myself am partial to a fisheye lens and the whole infrared deal. So to get inspiration for this album cover, Ferris was given an advanced copy of the record and he sort of listened to the music as well as some early sessions for what would become Axis to kind of get inspired and see what he wanted to do for this album art. And he ended up with this iconic yellow and purple contrast. I, I really love this cover, but the France cover, you guys look it up, it's sick as hell too. So the Jimi Hendrix Experience lineup goes as follows. You have, of course, Jimi Hendrix on vocals and guitar, Noel Redding on bass, and Mitch Mitchell on drums. This record was produced by Chaz Chandler, and notable guests on this album include The Breakaways, they do the backing vocals on Hey Joe, and legendary audio engineer Eddie Kramer. Work on Are You Experienced began in October of 66 and was done by the spring of 67. And believe it or not, as The Experience was a newer group on their label, their budget was pretty limited. Uh, Chandler would eventually open a line of credit it just to extend the budget on this album. They really stretched it as far as they could. But before the line of credit was opened, 
pre-production work was done in Hendrix's apartment just to save from spending more money and time in the studio that they didn't necessarily have to. Hey Joe was the first single. It was completed in October of 66 and it was the song the experience played for their appearance on top of the pops. There were actually two songs completed during this session in October 66. Um, hey Joe and another track that we're not totally sure what it is. Humor me, humor me here. What if Key to the Highway. No, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it might have been Howlin' Wolf's Killing Floor, which was shopped around as a potential B-side to Hey Joe, but they eventually went with writing an original tune for the B-side. This became Stone Free, which was the first original experience song. Not only was the budget limited at first, technology at Warner Brothers and CBS Studios was limited as well. Therefore, most of the recording was done at Olympia. Hendrix couldn't play his usual setup of his twin Marshall amps because there was too much noise, too much rattling being picked up. And when Chandler informed him of this, uh, Hendrix was not thrilled. To be entirely fair, Hendrix played really loud, and he was a diva about playing really loud. <laughs> but also, to be fair, would you tell Jimmy fucking Hendrix what equipment he could and couldn't use? Yeah, I wouldn't. Chandler was in charge of most of the recording process as well, and despite the implication that this practice would cost more money, he encouraged multiple takes of each song to be recorded. Following this practice while recording Are You Experienced, I think it definitely had a hand in forming the habit of doing an exorbitant amount of takes of any given song that we see on the other two Experience records. The track listing of my release goes as follows. Side A opens with Purple Haze, then we have Manic Depression, Hey Joe, Lover Confusion, May This Be Love, and Side A is rounded out with I Don't Live Today. Then Side 2 opens with The Wind Cries Mary, followed by Fire. Then we have an instrumental piece, Third Stone from the Sun, followed by Foxy Lady, and finally the album is closed with the title track, Are You Experienced? Quick note about Third Stone from the Sun. According to Hendrix, this song is about aliens discovering Earth, making contact with humans, the aliens deciding humans aren't fit to run Earth, annihilating the human race, and putting the planet in charge of... chickens. <laughs> What the f***? The second and third singles off Are You Experienced were Purple Haze and The Wind Cries Mary. And, oh, okay, I guess it's time for me to address what I'm wearing. <laughs> so even though Foxy Lady wasn't a single, they still filmed a music video for it. They filmed it out in California, and it stars Pamela DeBar. Yeah, arguably the most famous rock and roll groupie was in this video. And right now for this video, I am wearing a replica that I made of the dress that she wore in the Foxy Lady video. Uh, I actually have an entire post on my blog about the process of making this dress. I always wanted to wear this dress, so I just made it for myself. And now since I'm talking about the album Foxy Lady is on, I figure, you know, it's a good excuse to wear it. Uh, sadly, the Foxy Lady video is impossible to find. Uh, it used to crop up on YouTube every once in a while, but it's pretty much disappeared, unfortunately, and that's probably because the Hendrix estate is a uh. show right now. It's really sad to see. Are You Experienced carries an immense legacy, so... What do I think? Uh, there's no arguing that this is a landmark psych rock recording. Hendrix set the curve for guitar playing, and this set the curve for production as well. It's hugely impactful, and when people think psych rock, they think this record. They think Jimi Hendrix. They think Purple Haze. I will say it's a great introduction to psychedelic rock. It's a nice point of reference, I think. I gotta say, this track listing is Stacked. I don't think there's a bad song on here. May This Be Love is kind of a weaker spot in my opinion, but that's just with the frame of reference I have of how Hendrix slows things down in his later albums. But it's not a bad song at all. It would be a highlight on anybody else's record. Love or Confusion and I Don't Live Today get left out so much. 
I don't hear anybody talk about these songs. The I Don't Live Today riff is sick. Again, they would be standout tracks on any other album, but because it's going up against Purple Haze and Foxy Lady and Fire and even The Wind Cries Mary, they just, they get lost. I, I am partial to instrumental noodlings around, so I really dig Third Stone from the Sun. I dig the leitmotifs from May This Be Love, from Fire, there's a little smidge of Purple Haze in there as well. I just love when songs tie back to other songs on a record. It really shows that the group was thinking about making an album as a whole and not just making a selection of good songs that go on an album. Do you, do you get what I'm saying here? Purple Haze and Foxy Lady are good, but they get even better on live recordings. If Led Zeppelin got Since I've Been Loving You Right the first time on Zeppelin 3, that's a reference to a past Final Monday, by the way, Foxy Lady, I think, was best the last time. It just got better and better and better the more Hendrix performed it, and the more he was able to, you know, mess around with those solos in there. It's, it's kind of like jazz music, you know? How the same jazz tune can sound totally different from recording to recording, from day to day, from which group performs it, or even from the same group performing it years apart. This, this is how the stuff on Are You Experienced reads to me. Uh, I really dig Noel Redding. I guess I really am from the school of Miss Pamela. <laughs> He's super underrated. He hasn't quite come into his own on Are You Experienced, but he still rules on here. Eddie Kramer is God? Yeah, yeah. On this series right here, Eddie Kramer is God. The work on I Don't Live Today, on Third Stone, and from the title track are just beyond. It's unreal. It's such a treat to listen to especially when, you know, get your headphones on and you really zone out to everything that's going on. The only thing that would top Kramer's work here is his work on other Experience records. Are You Experienced isn't my favorite Hendrix album. That goes to Electric Ladyland. I covered this on Instagram Vinyl Monday as I did Axis Bold as Love. Don't worry, we'll loop back around to those eventually. But Are You Experienced is one of those albums where... Uh, hearing this for the first time changed my life. Um, not quite to the degree of Dylan Blonde on Blonde or of Layla. That album actually recalibrated the course of my life, but, but this is up there. I have spent a lot of hours with this record, and it was instrumental to my growing love of psych rock. So my personal favorites on this release are Manic Depression, Hey Joe, I Don't Live Today, Fire, and Third Stone from the Sun. And that's it. This is my closer look at Are You Experienced? If you liked this episode, you should give this video a like below and comment what you think of Are You Experienced? I love hearing what you guys have to say about the records I like. And if you like what I do with this series, you should totally check out my other episodes and subscribe. Oh, and subscribe if you want to see Willie and the Poor Boys next week. I am so excited about talking about that record, and I'm so sorry that I could get it out for July 4th. Next week though, I promise. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you stick around for next week. Bye!